let's get started. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, to, um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about the three men. Um, I mean, I'm going to cover three main things, which is place, proposition, and the program. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, just the university and study group, we have over 30, uh, we have um, over 25 years co um, collaboration. So, um, to make it simple, study group, we running three campuses for just the university. So, which is Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. In another word, these three centers, these three campuses are belong to study group. We fully running and operate this three center. Yeah, I actually received many inquiry um, about study in Chester University's regional campuses. Yeah, so if your student after study in regional campuses, you should be in touch with the regional campus team, not through me, yeah, because we are two separate teams. Yeah, this is the three location we have, I just covered, yeah. Um, in Brisbane, it's in very city center. Um, however, in Brisbane, we only offer master degree at this stage. We don't have bachelor or graduate degree available. In Melbourne, um, I believe um, your Melbourne office must be very familiar, this building, yeah. So um, we move, moving this building three years ago. Um, it's a purpose built for Chester University Melbourne Study Center. Um, before COVID-19, we have over 4,000 students, over 4,000 students study in our Melbourne study center, in our Melbourne campus, which is very full. Um, in 2017 and 18, we actually reached our maximum, we reached our capacity, um, capacity. Um, but of course, um, when the COVID um, comes, so we have like less students. But in overall, Melbourne campus is the biggest campus, has the most population of students, has the most of enrollment students so far. We offer both undergraduate and postgraduate and also graduate diploma in accounting, business and IT. In Sydney, uh, we also um, located in the very city center. Uh, it's very, very convenient. You can see uh, um, there was a shop around and also uh, there's so many buses available. Um, in Sydney, we have over 52 nationalities. So we have a number of European students. Um, they choose um, CSU Sydney. Um, it's all because of the very, very convenient location. Um, the bus in front of us uh, linking you to all the beaches and all the area which are popular um, uh, popular living places for international students okay here give you some um, um, idea or some snapshot about um, our study centers um, so it's it's not a big campus of course because it's not a traditional campus it's it's just a city campus um, uh, for a university. So of course, we don't have a big lab, uh, we don't have pharmacy, medicine, such degree related, but pretty much if you're talking about a business, if you're talking about IT, we have all good facility provided to students, including a cafe, including computer room and library as well. Here are the key staff. Um, Azin, it's located in Melbourne. Jeff is in Sydney. Ali is also in Melbourne and we have Marie, she is academic director in Brisbane. Okay, proposition, what makes Chester University Study Center stand out? I would like to talk about the first things about the employment rate. It has been the constantly five years, we rank number one in Australia for graduate employment. This is not ranked by us, it's ranked by QILT, Graduate Outcome Survey. Um, we always, many universities say they are top in Australia, but we say we are number one in Australia. It is indeed number one. If you go into the QILT website, you can clearly see Chester University has been the constantly five year ranked number one in Australia for employment, uh, for graduate employment. We are very career focused and we also have a supportive learning environment. Okay, I expand a little bit more about graduate employment rate. Okay, so we have 87.5 graduate 
employment rate in Australia. That's owing to um, a university very focused on career, very support students in equip them with the job ready skill. Okay, um, we have a very strong career team. They've been running for many years. They support students, train students, and we have instant webinar in the evening before COVID when campus open. It's in the evening, and also now it's now in the weekend. So we train students for um, the resume preparation. We train students for interview. We have all sort of assistance provided student to uh, make them a job ready okay our starting salary is also higher than the average which is at 60,100 um, compared to the average is 62,000 and of course our course are accredited by industry and professional body such as CPA Australia and ACS yeah I would like to talk about Australian Computer Science, the science ACS, yeah. So we all know if a student is looking at the future um, for a five or skill assessment, they have to undertake a course, they have to complete a course, um, I mean, recognized by ACS if they talking about the IT stream, yeah. Um, these actually have a street uh, criteria to university every one or two years they have to review yeah um as far as i'm aware there are many universities who also run the it program and not in the list of australia computer society yeah um i've heard from many students and when they finish their degree when they're looking for uh, the skill assessment they are in the some difficulty they are in the trouble so when you provide a student a professional consultation so always ask students what they after what they're looking at yeah do they have any plan do they have any plan after they finish their degree so that's so better to plan for for students future um, I talk about strong career development program. Um, we are the first university we're running a 12 weeks internship. I understand now many universities, they have a similar program, but we are the first one or say number one who implement or, or brought up this program internship. It's 100% free of charge and it is including eight weeks preparation plus 12 weeks on spite internship. Yeah. Um, one thing make us do doubt is this internship is available to all students, all graduate. Yeah. Um, I, um, I understand some university, they might have some selected criteria when offer you the internship. For example, you should have an average GPA, um, whatever 4.0, or you cannot um, fail more than 20%, or in the last semester, you got, cannot fail. They have some um, sort of selected criteria. However, for Chester University, this opportunity offer to all students each of them. The only condition we ask is uh, they have a valid visa. They can either um, in the visa of 485 or on the process of applying for 85. So there was a no selective criteria. As long as student would like, we offer a range of internship, they will get it, yeah. So in the eight weeks preparation, including um, there will be team trans students for the interview skill, for resume writing skill, and also take student to the different organization for interview. Yeah. So um, we have a very good LinkedIn network, um, career hub, um, student ambassador program, and leadership program. The other the the last two program um, is offered to stu um, students leadership. Yeah, we actually tend to hire our own student to promote our university. Yeah, so be before um, the border is closed, we have like regularly, I think quarterly, quarterly international travel, and we hire our student to go back to their country to represent our university. Yeah. Um, we also give students a lot of opportunity, including um, taking up the job within the study group organization. Yeah, so we have a big organization in our head office. Uh, we have 
a couple of hundred staff, including IT department, accounting department, marketing department. And um, if you going into and uh, if you're going into the every department, you probably find our CSU on graduate. Yeah, we very much prefer to hire our own student. In the admission team, when you receive our offer, when you're talking to someone who process students' credit assessment, RPL, you probably um, later notice um, that he or she is also one of the CSU graduates. Um, we always say um, degree are great, but internship can make difference. Yeah, um, many of uh, many students they choose study with us not only believe uh, not only because of um, I mean the good location and also um, the scholarship offer um, the COVID support to student. Um, it's also many because of the internship. It's also because of we really care students' future. Okay. Um, leadership program, I already talked about it, yeah. <clears throat> the last things about um, how you choose, uh, why, is that, uh, why, CSU, why CSU stand up for students is about uh, our supportive learning environment, yeah. Um, so due to COVID-19, I know many universities, they move their course online, um, but we don't call our course as online course, yeah. We pretty much call face-to-face -face virtual learning. Um, because uh, we still have a same lecture, exactly same lecture who told you before, um, sitting in front of the screen, sitting in front of the computer, they give you a lessons which enable you to directly interrupt with your um, interrupt with your lectures. Yeah, um, it's still um, a vivid class rather than showing a PowerPoint in front of you. So we're very proud of um, um, our in virtual learning. Um, in the recent student survey, we actually received very high satisfactory rate. Yeah. And to support students, um, since we start teaching, since we start implement a virtual learning, uh, we also support students for doing examination. Yeah. For example, in July intake, uh, we have an open book exam, um, which is to support student more for offshore country offshore country we also um the first institution first university uh we have up to 21 days refund policy so if the students are not happy with the course not happy with the virtual learning they can ask for refund or defer to 2021 when the border is open yeah. <clears throat> now i'm talking about the program so which is very important you like to know what program we have yeah so um, as I mentioned, except Brisbane campus um, in Sydney and Melbourne, we all have undergraduate and postgraduate available. Yeah. Uh, we are running at trimester structure, trimester structure. So we have a three star days, three star days each year. Yeah. So subject including three hours plus time per week, online activity and private studies. Student for bachelor student, they expect to come into uh, campus about three days. Yeah, for master student, most of them come into campus only two days. Yeah, so twelve weeks of classes plus one exam week per semester. So each semester, you can understand, is thirteen weeks in total. Thirteen weeks in total. Okay, um, bachelor is three years, twenty four subjects in total. So students study a subject per year. They have a choice to study either three plus three plus two or four plus four. Yeah, but of course for the new student in the first trimester, in the first semester, we always suggest students to take up three subjects. Yeah, if they're doing well, of course, in the next, in the following semester, they can take up four subjects. Yeah, graduate diploma is also delivered over one year, a subject. Master, master is very different. I would like to explain masters. Yeah, so um, our master are at 12 subject structure compared to many universities, they are at 16 subject structure. So this is very different. Each of the subject is weight at A point. So it's 12 times A coming to 96, which is the same as the other university of 16 times six coming to 96 in total. Okay, so students study six subjects per year, three subjects per trimester, per session. 
okay? Um, we also have 16 subject master, which I could talk about in another slide later, yeah. So this 12 subject master, we do not require any academic background. We do not require any academic background. It's two years COE duration. So you know what I mean? Two years COE duration. That's 100% meeting the requirement for 4A5 visa and also um, for the future if students want to pass skill assessment. Yeah. Um, this is, I mean, make our course very, very popular, but we designed this course uh, from long years ago. Yeah, uh, our master has always been 12 subjects, it's not because um, we change the structure, it's always been 12 subjects. Yeah, so you know, this is meeting the 4A5 visa requirement, it's fully uh, meeting two years. Um, a full time study requirement, uh, we issue student a two year COE. Okay. Yeah. So, um, this is a counting course for counting. We have Bachelor of Accounting three years, Graduate Diploma of Accounting, Master of Accounting, <coughs> Master of Accounting while Graduate Diploma. Yeah. Now I can talk about the difference between 12 subjects master and 16 subjects master. Yeah. You probably can see from these slides. Yeah. So we don't require background. Then what sort of student who have to study a master in 12 subjects, uh, in 16 subjects? Yeah, that is for students whose bachelor degree, it's not recognized, it's not recognized as Australia bachelor. So, so say in a new SAR assessment, their degree is regarded as associate bachelor equivalent to Australia associate bachelor. For those students, they have to study a graduate diploma before taking a master, yeah. So they have to study graduate diploma A subject, yeah, right? But this A subject will become a full credit taking into to the 16 subject of master. So in another words, if a student who coming at a social bachelor degree, they study 16 subject for master. Any student whose bachelor, whose bachelors are qualified, the same as Australian bachelor, they do in 12 subject master. We don't require background. Again, we don't require background. Yeah. Um, just for example, if students study Bachelor of, say, music, they can also apply to Master of Professional Accounting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I know um, some university, they also um, change their structure from 16 to 12. For example, from from 2018, July intake is the first time uh, University of Tasmania, they also implement uh, Master of Professional Accounting in 12 subjects. However, however, they require the similar accounting background in your bachelor degree. Yeah, yeah. And also some university, if they do um, the credit transfer, they change your, uh, they change 16 subjects to 12 subjects. If you're looking at the COE, they will be changed to become one and a half year. All right, guys, I, I, I just want to, want, um, I mean, do I speak too fast? Um, is anyone uh, have any problem so far? Any questions so far? No. Okay. Uh, we are good at the moment. And uh, yeah, we will be, uh, we have few questions. We'll be asking you end of the slide. Okay, good, good. Thank you. All right, good, yeah. All right. Um, that's the subject, core subject for um, 12 subject of professional accounting. <clears throat> um, so each of them, each of them are um, fully, fully recognized in CPA website. Yeah. Um, accounting, when, when we talk about accounting subject, that's a bit complicated than IT. Yeah. For IT course, as long as this course, this course itself, it's recognized by ACS. That would be all good, yeah. But for accounting, um, you can see most of the university, they have recognition for CPA. However, it doesn't mean the subject student take uh, in the list of CPA, yeah. So if you go into the CPA website, you will be able to see what CPA actually require in, um, in terms of the individual subject, yeah. For our subjects, each of them are in a list of CPA. Okay, IT. Yeah, uh, of course, again, we have Bachelor of IT, Graduate Diploma of IT, Master of IT, and IT in 12 subjects and 16 subjects. Okay, 
Um, for IT, I really want to spend a little bit more time, yeah, because it's a very popular uh, program, especially for students from, from, from India, from um, Nepal, from Sri Lanka, and also it's meeting the requirement for um, a skill assessment, yeah. So um, the, th um, the, the difference is for CSU IT, so firstly, uh, we are the university which provide the most specialization, the most specialization, yeah. Um, many universities, they have only one or two specialization or not more than three, but for us, we have 10 specialization. Okay, so student can choose the master of IT without specialization. But of course, if a student want to pass the skill assessment, you know, when they do a skill assessment, um, it's specifically like which which skill, uh, which um, which IT course against um, a certain quota. Yeah. So of course, business analysis. Uh, um, every year they have like about two thousand two hundred quotas. Yeah. So this is one very popular. Um, uh, we have, of course, cloud computing, mobile programming, computer networking, IT management, network security. This is another popular one because um, this specialization also involves um, a couple of thousands of quota in the past. Of course, in 2021, there was a new quota. I know it's cut half uh, for skilled immigration, um, but, but um, I talk about in the past, network security is also popular. Software design and development is also popular. Um, they have like many quotas available. And in 2020, we have a new added into our specialization, data science and cybersecurity. Yeah, cybersecurity is also now very, very popular. Okay. Um, Beside the counting of IT, we have business course. So business um, in business course also, we also have like different different area, different area. We have um, management, marketing, a general business study, and or um, uh, I think we also have human resources, not listed here. Okay, we have MBA course available. So MBA course, um, I need to explain because there are tips here again. MBA, you can see we have either 12 subjects or 16 subjects. The, the difference will um, rely on students' working experience. Yeah. Any student who like to do a shorter MBA course, 12 subjects, they will have minimum five years working experience and it's ideal in the management level. Okay, so if the student they don't have five years working experience, no choice, they have to study a 16 subject of MBA. Yeah, um, but some students, if they are new to this country, they're looking at two years full time study, they're looking at two years COE, then I think even they have enough working experience, they need to be careful because if you study MBA 12 subject, this one we register at one and a half years in terms of COE duration, one and a half years, okay? Um, how about a student who really like to do management but looking at 12 subjects course in two years? How about you have such a student? Mm, I want to save money, I want to do 12 subjects only, but I also looking at two years, yeah. In terms of this, I think student can choose to master of commerce because a master of com commerce, 12 subject, it's always registered as two years. Yeah. Um, under Master of Commerce, okay, so student can, under Master of Commerce here, student can choose a very good specialization to go deeper. They can choose general management that's very close to MBA. If you're looking at the cold course, 80% uh, they are the same as MBA, okay? Uh, they can also choose to study international management. All right, yeah. So this is another way for students who also study a uh, major in management, but they can lock in at a 12 subject master at two years COE duration. Yeah, all right. Um, okay, I cover pretty much all the yeah, MBA course, yeah, cold course, specialization. Um, yeah, we all talk about here. Now we can move to the entry requirement. Okay, the entry requirement for master degree, of course, we require Australia bachelor degree. Yeah, and um, please remember for offshore qualification, 
we will send assessment, we will send the degree to NUSA to check whether or not they are equivalent to Australia bachelor yet. Yeah. But I can tell you if your student doing a four years bachelor, um, most of them, yeah, 99%, um, yeah, they meeting the requirement, yeah. Uh, many years ago in Nepal, their bachelor is only three years, yeah. So each of them, each of them, um, their bachelor are assessed at a social bachelor level. Um, but three years ago, um, the education system also been changed. They're also doing a four years bachelor, yeah. And some country, I think in um, Bhutan, um, some country in Bangladesh or in some European country, uh, their bachelor are not qualified as our Australia bachelor. Um, so they probably not meeting direct entry to, to post a graduate. Yeah, they have to go, to do, go via a graduate diploma. English requirement, IELTS 6.0. Um, we require writing to, to be at, um, we require writing need to be at 6.0 level. Okay, yeah. Um, for um, bachelor is overall 6.0 and no bet less than 5.5. Yeah, okay, English requirement. I believe they are the same as most of university or I say um, um, not, I mean, not very high. I think it's in the below average because many university ask for 6.5 and we ask 6.0. For onshore student, for onshore student, how to how to seek for English waiver? How to seek for English waiver? The requirement will be you study in onshore for one year. Yeah, for one year. How about student? They only finish first semester because of course, when students are onshore, they realize, oh, CSU has a very popular 12 subject master. I want to transfer to CSU. I actually receive so many applications, every intake from CQU, from Latro, from MIT, from those universities who are running 16 subjects, right? Then when students finish in the first semester, they're looking at transfer to, to Chester University. Yeah. So if student pass all the subjects in the first semester, which is, I mean, the four subject structure, okay? Four units, if they pass all four units, we can also waive students' English. Yeah, if they coming at from CQU, um, CQU is also running trimester structure as us. So each intake student studies three subjects, yeah. In that case, we require students to complete um, two trimester, complete six subjects in total to be able to waive English. Okay, am I make clear for onshore English um, waiver? So either you study one year, um, we can also recognize diploma or advanced diploma level. Yeah, many students are doing top up course from diploma or advanced diploma from TAFE, from whatever college, and they want to top up to do a bachelor with us. Yeah, for all of those students, no problem. They will be waived English, they will be waived their IELTS. Okay, and for master student, it really depends on if they pass the first semester or not, if their IELTS has already expired or if they don't have qualified IELTS. Of course, if they have qualified IELTS, then English will be um, assessed, will be waived automatically. Yep, pricing, yeah. So um, 2020, it's about a cent, so I um, just use, Sorry, I didn't update the PowerPoint. It's still 2019 pricing, okay? Um, for bachelor, it's just over 3,500 per subject. Um, it's less than 30,000 per year. That's for master. Uh, that's for bachelor. For master, for IT, which is the most expensive one, um, it's just over 4,000 per subject. 2020, the price are sent 2021 we don't have plan to increase price due to COVID-19 yeah um, I want to highlight a very exciting news about um, our COVID-19 relief fund so university working together with government we have um, get a very strong funding a very sufficient funding to support students in the past, we do have a scholarship available, um, but it's all about 2,000 or 3,000 level. And this time, we have very, very exciting scholarship available to students. 
And also it's the first time from the July intake, we allow students to pre-deduct their scholarship by themselves. Yeah, in the past, due to GTE concern, we always require students to pay fees, to pay fees as normal, as indicated in the offer letter. And after census day, we pay back students for the scholarship year. But now because students simply doesn't have that much money to pay for the COE. So we require, we uh, approve students to pre-deduct the scholarship year. How to pre-deduct, I just show you example, um, which uh, I mean, that's from your student, that's from your first student. Yeah, that's from, I think, Anna's student. Okay. Can you, can you see this new sharing? Can you guys see this new sharing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. This, yeah, this is the scholarship we call COVID-19 relief. This is up to 13,300, a lot, a lot of money. Yeah, if in front of, if we put money in front of us, that's a bunch of money, yeah. Um, how, how, we, how we support students is each subject, so you can see, um, for example, for IT, each subject fees is 4,120. For each subject, student can um, discount it, can deduct 1,900. Yeah, but it's not available to all subjects. We promise to we promise to cover such discount level to up to seven subjects. Seven subject for for um, bachelor student for master student is actually up to six subject because we only agree to cover two semester, two semester. Yeah. So after the after discount after scholarship, each of the subject it's only equivalent to two thousand two hundred. Yeah, it's even cheaper than college. So many agents say they never they 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 they, they never believe CSU will have. Um, I mean, scholarship at such great level because many of agents, they actually CSU graduate. And when they study with us, they pay over 4,000 per subject. Now, their students are able to pay just 2,200 per subject. So, Lina? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they, they, this scholarship is for uh, total two years, 13,300? Uh, no, it's for the first six subjects. First six subject and that a student can take initially. Yeah, so for, for onshore, this is only for onshore students, not for offshore, okay? For onshore mm -hmm. students, we charge three subject up front to issue your COE, okay? Three subject, yeah. The three subject, the normal fee is over 12,000. And after discount, the three subject fee becomes 6,000. So student paying 6,000 for the first semester and around another 6,000 for the second semester. Okay, okay, got it, thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I know many students will ask, yeah, how about the rest of six subjects for master student? Yes, you give me a great discount for the first six subjects, which is really appreciate. How about the leftover six subjects? In terms of this, I don't have a, um, I mean, confirmed answer because this is great support only offered to students in the first two semester. In the first two semester, we call it COVID nineteen relief. Yeah. Um, however, I like to point out for onshore students, many of them actually transfer to our university. They only left six subjects also to take. Yeah. For example, this student. Um, from, from your office, right? This is Vietnam student. He studied um, in Western Sydney University, yeah. Um, he already finished, I think, six or seven subjects. If he passed, if he passed, he will definitely receive six subjects up here. Yeah, that means he only takes six subjects. So that means each of your subjects are at discounted level, yeah. How about student? Uh, who is new, who is new, for example, from bachelor to our, uh, to master, who have to study a full duration, 12 subjects, yeah. In a sense, I can only promise you a six subject at discounted level. And once you finish two semesters, student can choose um, seeking, seeking the further support from campus, yeah. Because campus also want to keep students, right? Campus, they need to meet their target for retention rate. Yeah, my budget only available to um, student recruitment. 
my budget is not covered for retention yet. But of course, if a student complete two semesters, six subjects, our campus would definitely have funding to support students to continue the rest of six subjects. Yeah. But this is, be careful, it's only support to students for the first two subjects, uh, for, the two, for the first two semesters. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so we are in the summary stage. Yeah. Um, I already talked about our proposition, our internship, and our course, 12 subjects, masters, which is very fantastic, exciting, and I also in the last I covered the scholarship year. So in summary, three courses, accounting, business, and IT. Yeah, I'm sorry we don't have something um, such as nursing. We don't have, um, 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 I mean, uh, the other degree available. Of course, we are looking at um, the project management uh, we're looking at uh, the wide range of course, um, but um, I mean, campus also need to be very careful with the planning, yeah, because now, nowadays the borders are still closed, so we might not get many students, right? Three program, bachelor, graduate diploma, and master. Three locations, Brisbane, Melbourne, and Sydney. So Brisbane is so far the largest study center, followed by Sydney and Brisbane. Three intakes, March, July, and November. Three key points to take away. So number one, number one, number one, I just repeat this three times. <laughs> number one in Australia for graduate employment. 12 weeks post-study internship available to each student, all student, every student, okay? Located in a very convenient study center. Um, for students, they only travel to campus two days, maximum three days, two days, maximum three days. Okay, so this is all about just the university. Um, at the, such situation, a current scenario that borders still close, and we can look only looking at the onshore student, and we remain um, um, very competitive, to be honest, because um, we have a strong duty assessment for offshore application. Our rejection rate, it's um, over 50%. Yeah, we actually rejected a lot for offshore application, yeah. And once student, they arrive onshore, we don't have any GTE concern. We can um, accept all applications. So that's why CSU also always has more onshore application than uh, onshore student than offshore. Yeah, before 2019, we actually pretty much stopped all the offshore application from high risk, from level three country. Yeah, so pretty much we only take onshore students because once they're onshore, they don't have any risk. Yeah, so it's not a good time um, for, for, for you to hunt for the onshore, for, for hunt for the onshore students. Yeah, because I believe many of them are looking at um, the opportunity to reduce their fee, to reduce their financial burden. Yeah, it's a really great opportunity for students who are thinking, are thinking about changing the provider. Yeah, um, I also um, would like to close uh, ways, um, okay, new, new, new Sherry. I also like to share you about, um, yeah, our Facebook site, yeah. So we have a good marketing team, um, I mean, online, online promotion team. They upload lots of video uh, pretty much every week. Yeah, they interview our own student about how you're feeling about virtual class and how you're feeling about the exam, how you're feeling about the life. Yeah, pretty much a lot of topics here. Yeah, I, I will send you guys the links later. Yeah, the most popular, the most recent topic is about the internship. Oh, it's a hot topic. Yeah, um, this video it's about one hour time. We're talking about internship, how, what, and why. Okay, so uh, we just interviewed a different student. They talk about how they through uh, how they find the proper jobs through our internship. We have a student they look, looking at job at Google Australia. They're looking at of course Westpac. They're looking at our own uh, own organization study group. Yeah, they're looking at a very exciting opportunities here. Yeah, so do share with your student if uh, they will ask you so many detailed questions about internship. You just simply through this website through this URL to your student. 
then they can yeah understand every detail by themselves. Okay. Now, now uh, I open for question time. Question time. Uh, Lena. Yes. Hi, this is Minu from uh, Melbourne office. Thank you for the information. Uh, as you said that for the offshore client, you can accept the client for three unit fee, right? For bachelor's and master's both or only for? Only for onshore. That's only for onshore. For I offshore, we yeah. charge, um, it depends on different country. But if you're talking about India, we charge a subject upper front. You mean one year tuition fee? Yes, yes. Okay. So one year tuition fee for the offshore client. Yeah, yeah. But for India and, and for um they you study long, right? So they are able to to have a one year fee. Yeah. We recently reduced Bangladesh from mm -hmm. a subject to four subject because in the country they don't have study long away available. For India, we don't see a concern about a subject up front because pretty much every student they use study long. They use the bank loan to cover the one year fees. Yeah. The only concern we are not able to get in many applications uh, from Bangladesh. Yeah, because they don't have bank loan and it's really trouble in paying a subject upper front. Okay. And what's the criteria to get admission uh, from offshore in CSU? I mean, if there is the gap, it is acceptable. If a student is married, then if it is acceptable, what are the criteria? It's a concern. It's a concern. Yeah. I, I would like to encourage you guys start from onshore because offshore we're really picky. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I feel so sorry, but we're really picky. I see most of students' applications are rejected. Yeah, I, I argue with them. I um, keep discussing with admission, but they always have all kinds of reasons. Yesterday, I have a student um, rejected because of very slightly lower GPA in year 12. But students apply master. So I think um, CSU, we try to um, jump into the high tier in terms of um, universities risk. Yeah, we're currently level two university, but we are cl very close to level one. We are at 1.2 or something. So we're looking very strictly in terms of offshore GTE. Okay, all right, yeah. yeah. Any more questions? I think I'm pretty much clear about it. Okay. Yeah, so I think I covered too many information. It might be hard for you to think of any relevant question in a short time. Yeah, I will send you this um, um, I mean PDF document. I send yep. you relevant link and for you to absorb for via. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to next time we use one or two application uh, as a case discussion so we can do an open case discussion. You actually now have a onshore application who receive our conditional offer. We have a three conditions address in his offer letter. Yeah, so we can use this one and I encourage mm -hmm. you to send more application. Then we can have a, another session, open, open cases. Yeah, because our admission uh, and also um, each offer letter, it's a, also a good um, learning platform for you to understand this program more. Okay, and your next intake is in November now, right? November, yeah, November. Okay. It's uh, started as in November 17. For onshore, we open application until the orientation week because they can jump in anytime. Yeah, and also um, now it's, it's for the, um, the virtual class, so they don't have any time in rush. So we open application until the first week. Yeah, the only thing you need to be careful is about the uh, credit assessment, RPL. Yeah, RPL is assessed by faculty. You know, faculty, they busy with teaching. Their primary job is academic. They can only use their after hour time to assess RPL. Yeah. So RPL takes five working days. Yeah. If you have application uh, which don't seek for RPL, you can actually send until our call start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, otherwise, yeah, I encourage you to send um, as early as possible. Remember, we can do advanced RPL. Advanced RPL means. For example, this student enrolled four subjects in, 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 in semester two. 
Yeah, this four subject, student doesn't know pass or not. Yeah, but as long as you send me the course online, as long as you send me the course online, we can do advanced credit assessment. Yeah, this will be a conditional credit. And once you show me the official transcript in, um, to, to, to evidence your past all subject, and we can change to the conditional up here, become unconditional up here. All right, yeah. Yeah. It is okay. pretty much clear. Thank you, Lina. No worries, no worries. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, it's our just first section for CSU, and our next section uh, will be um, the other program. For example, University of Sydney Foundation. For example, Flinders. Uh, Flinders, we do have nursing course available, um, but I will schedule. Um, I will schedule a different session with Rahu or, or Anna. All right. So. Thank you guys, thank you for your time. I send in a relevant material um, after we close this. Okay? All right. Yeah. Thank, thank, you, thank so you so much, Lina. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Lina.